Uh, so but thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to make uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, today, I will talk about the, the PDI data interface and uh, how it makes it possible to handle uh, I.O. encodes uh, as a data coupling problem. Uh, but before uh, diving into details, I will uh, just uh, introduce the reason we developed this uh, PDI data interface. And uh, the initial motivation for it uh, was the I.O. problem. And uh, in fact, in uh, simulation codes, when you want to do I.O., um, you want a, a lot of different things. And uh, as a result, uh, handling I.O. is uh, usually a, a very complex problem, and it's a job on its own, uh, where there are dedicated experts that know how to uh, optimize the I.O. Um, luckily, when we have a complex problem like that, with experts, uh, there's usually a, a solution in the form of uh, libraries. And as a matter of fact, uh, for I.O., there are libraries that uh, encode the best practices. Uh, in fact, there are many libraries uh, that uh, support uh, I.O. and that data handling in um, uh, simulation codes. And um, because of that, uh, choosing the best library becomes a problem on its own because there is no a uh, library that is always the best. The best library depends on uh, the type of I.O. you do. So that depends on uh, the type of code you're working with, what level of parallelism, uh, what's the frequency of the I.O. It depends on the, the kind of I.O. you're doing. Are you doing uh, a checkpointing uh, related I.O. or are you doing writing results, reading uh, initial parameters? Um, it depends in one single code on the execution you're doing. Are you doing uh, a, a small debug test or are you doing a large uh, production run? It depends on the hardware you're using. Maybe on a specific hardware, uh, there is a, a smart way of doing uh, your uh, I.O. And as a result of all of that, uh, there is no single uh, library that is the best every time and in many codes we had to work with at uh, Maison de la Simulation, uh, we saw the codes uh, implement an IO abstraction layer to be able to uh, switch between uh, various uh, IO library. Um, and that's something that we see in a lot of codes. And in fact, uh, if we take a step back and if we look at the code and usually simulation codes look like that. You have an initialization phase, then you enter your uh, main loop. That's usually the, 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 the time loop in the, in the simulation. And then you have a, a finalization phase. And in a code like that, when you look at I.O. related uh, issues, uh, we have a lot of them. Uh, at the initialization, you might have some parameter reading, uh, data in initialization. Uh, then during the execution, you might uh, write uh, intermediate results, uh, checkpoints, uh, but also maybe uh, you can do uh, post-processing, in-situ post-processing. Maybe you will uh, make some outputs in the framework of a code coupling. Uh, you might also have uh, inputs during the execution, uh, for example, for data assimilation or for coupling with other codes. And in the finalization, you might uh, want to write results or checkpoint, final checkpoint. And from the code point of view, all of these are very similar. You either uh, export or import data. But the libraries you need to do all of these parts are, are really different. And uh, what we do with BDI is that we, we formalize that uh, as the data handling problem in uh, simulation codes. And we try to provide uh, a single coherent uh, solution to handle all of these problems. So how do we do that in uh, PDI? Well, if you take your uh, parallel MPI simulation code, uh, the question is, how do you access all of these uh, data handling libraries that provide uh, the best solution for each kind of uh, data handling problem you have in your code? Well, in uh, 
PDI, we propose to first uh, annotate your code using a purely declarative API to identify the, the data in the code and to offer a plugin system uh, through PDI to access the uh, existing uh, uh, data handling libraries. And how do you uh, join between these two? Uh, how do we fill the gap? Uh, we use something that we call the specification tree. Uh, it's a YAML file uh, separate from your uh, simulation file where you can specify using PDI syntax uh, what to do uh, with the data you uh, manipulate in your code. Uh, so basically, we uh, have a declarative API in the code and we separate uh, the data handling from the main code. In practice, how does it work? Um, so PDI API is uh, very simple. Uh, we first have uh, two uh, functions for initialization and uh, finalization. Uh, the initialization function takes the, the specification tree, the YAML specification tree, uh, as a parameter. And the finalization uh, function uh, will just release uh, all um, PDI-related resources. Then the, most, the two most important uh, functions in PDI are PDI share and PDI reclaim. Uh, with PDI share, uh, you declare uh, that uh, one of the buffer you manipulate in uh, in your code uh, reached a coherent or consistent state, and uh, you will share it and, and reference it in a PDI uh, buffer store. We will see uh, later what this uh, buffer store is. Uh, but so what do you do? Uh, you give a unique name to your uh, buffer, a unique identifier. Uh, you give a pointer to the data and uh, you give a right uh, for PDI to access the, uh, the buffer. So either you want the data to go out of your code or you want the data uh, to go get in your code. So out is similar to write and in is similar to read. And you can also do um, in out. And uh, so share means uh, your buffer reached uh, a coherent, consistent state. And uh, reclaim uh, means you will uh, now reuse the buffer uh, that has this uh, identifier uh, for something different. And you unreference it from uh, the PDI store because you want to be able to reuse it. So in practice, in the code, it will uh, usually look like that. You will have a pair of share and reclaim. Um, and in between the share and reclaim, uh, we have what we call a, a shared region. Uh, so in this uh, part of the code, between the share and the matching reclaim, uh, your data is referenced in PDI store, which means that the plugins can use uh, the data you have generated. So in this region, uh, the code uh, exposing its data should uh, refrain from uh, modifying the, the content of the data because uh, uh, if it's shared with PDI that can read it and, and you're modifying it at the same time, it will fail. It's a bit similar to what we, you have if you do um, a MPI I send and then MPI wait. In between, you're not you should refrain from modifying the, the content of the of the buffer. And in case you uh, shared your buffer uh, with PDI in, which means uh, you um, um, you allow uh, PDI to change the content, you should also refrain from accessing the buffer because it might be uh, modified in the process of being modified by a PDI plugin. So this four function in it finalize uh, share and reclaim is basically all you need to um, annotate your code uh, with PDI. Of course, we offer um, additional API to ease the use of uh, PDI. But really, these four functions are all you need um, to access uh, to use PDI. So for example, in the additional uh, API we offer, uh, we have PDI Expose that simply does a, a share and a reclaim in one single line so that the, the shared region is limited to, to this line. And you don't uh, take a risk to um, uh, 
uh, to modify the buffer while it's shared. Uh, we have the concept of event. Uh, it's a bit like sharing data, except when you don't have any data. It makes it possible uh, for your code to notify interesting points in the, in the simulation uh, and uh, that is not related to data per se. And we offer uh, PDI multi-expose. Uh, PDI multi-expose makes it possible to expose many uh, buffers at the same time. And it will do a, a share of all buffers before uh, generating an event and doing all the reclaims. And with that approach, uh, when the event occurs, you're sure that in PDI, you have access to all the buffers together. And if you want to combine them, for example, it becomes uh, possible. So this is the API of uh, the PDI data interface. Uh, so as you saw, everything is basically related to the concept of PDI uh, data store. Uh, PDI data store is really the core of PDI. Um, and what is this uh, PDI data store? It's pretty simple. It's uh, very similar to a Python dictionary, for example. Um, so it uh, associates uh, to uh, unique uh, names, identifiers, uh, a reference uh, to uh, data. And each uh, reference contains uh, the address of a buffer in memory. Um, it contains information about ownership. Uh, so for example, who's owning uh, the memory, who's responsible for uh, allocating and freeing the memory of this buffer. And it contains information about locking and this uh, makes it possible to have a single writer or multiple readers. And with this approach, uh, the various plugins and um, uh, the main code, the simulation code, uh, do not step on uh, each other's toes uh, when accessing the data. Uh, the, this log ensure that there is a, a valid uh, access pattern and that the plugins uh, do not mess up with the uh, simulation code. And the last uh, bit of information available in uh, the reference is uh, the data type. And the data type provides information about the memory layout and interpretation. And this uh, data type in um, PDI um, is uh, provided uh, either through annotations in the code like that, for uh, C, C++, or um, in Python, for example, it can be fully automatic. The, the Python language provide everything we need uh, to, to get the, the information about the data type. Or uh, if you're using Fortran, for example, uh, you need to uh, give this information separately in the, in the YAML file because we haven't yet uh, developed the uh, parser for the, the Fortran. Uh, for the Fortran type system. But for example, in case you're using uh, C, C++, as is um, shown in this example, uh, you will uh, basically use the information available from uh, the source code. Uh, but in case, for example, of a dynamic array uh, in C, this is represented as a, a pointer. And we don't know, for example, the size of the dynamic array. And so in order to give the information to PDI, uh, we annotate this buffer by saying that the, the size of the dynamic array that is behind this, uh, this pointer is buffer size, where buffer size is the value of uh, another uh, variable, another buffer that can be shared with uh, PDI. So the, the data type model in, in PDI is inspired and is very similar to the MPI data type or the HD5 data type. We have support for uh, scalars that contain the, the data, uh, arrays, including, of course, uh, multidimensional arrays, and uh, records uh, that are like the uh, C uh, structure or Fortran um, derived types. Uh, in fact, we also support um, references or pointers. And in PDI, we have two types of uh, buffers. 
uh, we, for uh, most buffers that are handled as data, uh, PDI only uh, manipulates uh, pointers to the data and uh, doesn't do any copy. Uh, this ensures that uh, PDI just uh, basically uh, can take your uh, data pointer and uh, can uh, forward uh, that to the right library according to your uh, YAML file uh, with minimal overhead. We don't uh, access the content of the data. We uh, don't um, copy the data, really. It's um, very uh, limited uh, overhead. But in case of uh, metadata, Metadata can be used in uh, dollar expressions in uh, YAML, or it can be used to um, uh, give information about uh, other buffers. For example, here the buffer size is tagged as metadata, and hence we can use it as the size of the main buffer. And uh, this makes it possible to... Um, uh, so PI keeps a copy in this case of the of the metadata to be able to uh, use it at any time, even uh, when it's not shared by the user code. The last value is kept by PDI uh, so that you can uh, access this value at uh, any time. Um, so that's the type system of uh, PDI that is used in the data store. Uh, so the data store makes it possible to uh, share data between the user code and the plugins. Uh, but the second aspect of PDI, in addition to data, is control. And control is handled through a, a notification system. Basically, the, the plugins can register uh, to be called uh, whenever a new uh, piece of data is shared or accessed. Or uh, on arbitrary locations in the code uh, that these are our uh, events. So uh, this is really what uh, PDI offers, uh, a system to, to share uh, the buffer uh, containing the data of the code and a notification system so that the plugins can uh, react and use this uh, data. So what plugins do we have in PDI? We have uh, plugins for uh, input-output uh, using, for example, HDF5, Parallel HDF5, uh, NetCDF or Parallel NetCDF, and other uh, I.O. library that is called uh, SignLib and that's developed at, um, uh, at the Ulish Supercomputing Center. Uh, we have support for uh, spe special purpose uh, I.O. libraries like the FTI fault tolerance interface or Sensei for uh, visualization. Uh, we have support for um, libraries that uh, provide, um, that make it possible to integrate in workflows. Uh, I will say a bit more today about uh, integration in a, a workflow with Desk uh, using the DESA plugin. Uh, we have support for the Flow VR uh, workflow system. Melissa is a, a work in progress. It's a tool for uh, ensemble runs. And you can even write your own code uh, to handle uh, the data uh, exposed to PDI. Uh, for example, using uh, dollar expressions, uh, very simple language embedded in uh, YAML. Or you can use uh, Python if you want, C, C++, Fortran. Basically, you can uh, really add uh, processing uh, after the fact um, through the uh, plugin system. So how does it look uh, using a plugin? For example, with the um, Decl HDF5 plugin that makes it possible to use the HDF5 uh, a file format and the HDF5 library through PDI. So let's say you have a code instrumented with PDI like that. Uh, you can write with this plugin uh, your data in the HDF5 format. This plugin uh, relies heavily on uh, the concept of dollar expressions and configuration value uh, with a default value. Uh, and that approach makes it possible for us uh, to um, make simple things easy so uh, that uh, you can uh, get your data in a file uh, very fast. 
but it also makes uh, complex things possible so that, for example, if uh, an IO expert uh, want to optimize the IO for you, uh, you can uh, really uh, use all the features of uh, HDF5. So in practice, uh, what do you write in the uh, specification tree of uh, PDI? Uh, so this is uh, the specification tree. Uh, you uh, add a plugin section in the in the YAML file, and in this section you specify that you want to uh, load the uh, DECL HDF5 uh, plugin. You will just have to say that you want to write your uh, data in a file called uh, my file iteration id rank h5, and that you want to write your main buffer where main buffer is the name of uh, the buffer containing your data that you exposed in the code. And with just that, uh, you will end up with uh, one file per iteration and per MPI rank uh, that contains a single data set uh, containing your main buffer. And everything is taken from uh, the annotations in your code uh, to write the data uh, using the, the correct size, the correct type, the, uh, the correct rank and iteration ID. So it's, uh, it's very simple to, to get a first uh, output uh, working, uh, but then it's possible to uh, do complex things uh, if you want to uh, with uh, IO experts or if you want a, a specific uh, format on disk. Uh, for example, here, uh, by changing the, the plugin configuration, uh, I chose to um, use a parallel HDF5, so I've also loaded an additional plugin, the MPI plugin, uh, and to uh, create a data set with a, a different name. Uh, in, in this case, my data set is, um, is a 3D data set instead of 2D, uh, so I've added uh, the dimension of time to the data set, and uh, I've removed the ghost zones and overlapped the ghost zones so that in the end, uh, the file is written uh, incrementally by adding uh, each time step to the, to the file and um, by uh, combining the data from each um, MPI rank, removing the ghost zones to uh, create a single uh, 3D uh, data on disk containing uh, the whole domain uh, for, the, for all time steps. So really the, the goal of this uh, plugin is to get from uh, something simple uh, that you can write very easily and still make it possible to, to, to get uh, exactly what you, you want. Uh, so now we've seen all the, the pieces of uh, PDI, so uh, let's um, see uh, how it works uh, inside of PDI. Uh, let's re re recap that. So I, I go back to my, uh, to my code, uh, starting with the initialization, with the, the main time loop and the, the finalization. And uh, what happens when we uh, use PDI in that code? So at initialization, the, the PDI init uh, function is called, and the code will uh, load the, the specification tree, and uh, it will load PDI with it. And PDI will, um, will uh, initialize the, the PDI store and uh, pass the, the specification tree. Uh, in the specification tree, we see that the uh, DECL HDF5 plugin is specified, so uh, PDI will uh, initialize the, the plugin. Then, uh, when the code uh, uh, starts executing and, and reaches uh, a, a point where there is a, a buffer that is shared with uh, PDI, uh, the, the PDI share function is called, and the data reference is uh, stored in the in the PDI store. As uh, in reaction to that, to that uh, PDI will uh, emit an event saying that this um, a new data has uh, appeared in the in the store, and uh, it will notify the the plugin, uh, the DECL HDF5 uh, plugin. 
the plugin uh, will use its uh, configuration in the specification tree and we'll see that this uh, piece of data is uh, interesting to it and that the user requested for it to be uh, written to disk. So it will access the store, uh, read the data from it, and uh, write it uh, to disk. So basically, uh, just in your code by uh, writing it and annotating some information about uh, the data type, and annotating also information with, about uh, buffers uh, availability with the share and reclaim system, uh, you have done everything you need. You can now compile your, compile your code and you're done. On the code side, uh, you don't need to recompile. Uh, you just have uh, to change the, the YAML file and you can change the library you use. Uh, you can change the IO pattern and you can do even more. Uh, in the YAML file, uh, you uh, write uh, what you want to do with the data of the code. And you can um, use the pre-made plugins that uh, PDI provides for uh, HDF5, NetCDF, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Or you can uh, write your own code. And this uh, information uh, describes the behavior, describes what you want to do uh, with your data by reacting to the events emitted by uh, PDI and accessing the, the data in PDI store. Uh, this is uh, really what PDI provides. On the one side, the code written once, compiled once, and then all the data handling can be done and changed without even recompiling the code. You can change the, the library you use without even recompiling uh, your simulation code. Um, so basically that's PDI. So now let's see from uh, a performance point of view how, how it behaves. Uh, so this is an experiment that was done on the Marinostrum uh, supercomputer um, where uh, we took the, the Gisela code and uh, we checkpointed this code. And here we use a, a fixed number of four nodes. Uh, so small execution, uh, but what we uh, vary is the, um, the number, the size of the problem in this four nodes. So basically on the right, you have uh, a rather big problem that uh, fills the, the node memory. And on the left, you have a very small problem where uh, basically you only manipulate um, metadata and the data size is very small. And uh, we ran uh, this experiment with uh, three uh, approaches uh, for, um, for checkpointing. Uh, either no checkpoint or HDF5 for checkpointing or the dedicated uh, fault tolerance interface for um, checkpointing. And all of these we did either um, using directly the library or through PDI. And what we see is that uh, for a given uh, approach, which is uh, identified by a color, uh, the circle is the uh, direct use of the library and the, the cross is the use through uh, PDI. And apart from a bit of noise, basically the, 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 the use of PDI is uh, not not noticeable. Um, uh, really, whether we use PDI or not, we see exactly uh, the same uh, execution time um, for these four uh, approaches. Uh, what we've also done is um, a weak scaling. So it's a similar uh, experiment, but this time we, we scale from four nodes to 128 nodes. We still have uh, the same results. Whether we use PDI or not, it's uh, irrelevant from a performance point of view. There is uh, no noticeable overhead. Uh, the only difference is uh, uh, depends on the uh, underlying library used for um, IO. Uh, an interesting point to notice here, however, is that uh, of course the the, the faster uh, the, the approach that takes the the minimum time is always to not do any checkpoint. 
But uh, if you want to do a checkpoint, the best approach uh, changes depending on the number of nodes you're using. Uh, so sometimes uh, it's uh, best to use um, uh, HDF5, uh, sometimes it's best to use FTI. And with uh, the use of PDI, it becomes really easy, easy to switch from one to the other, and you don't have to change the, the user code at all uh, to switch from one to the other. The, the last uh, performance evaluation we did uh, in this experiment is uh, to uh, evaluate uh, the memory consumption. So here, uh, this is the memory consumption with no uh, checkpointing, with HDF5 checkpointing, and with FTI. And what we see is that uh, in all these cases, uh, the approach uh, without PDI in red or, or with PDI in blue uh, they really are uh, very uh, similar from a uh, memory consumption point of view. Uh, and the reason for that is, of course, that we uh, don't do any uh, memory copy and only um, uh, manipulate buff uh, pointer to the buffers in uh, PDI. Uh, so there is no uh, memory overhead in uh, PDI. So basically, that's PDI for uh, I.O., but I said that you can also uh, do more than I.O. Uh, PDI is not an I.O. library, it's a data handling library. And uh, you can uh, use other plugins like the, the PyCall plugin, uh, where you can uh, write your own Python code inside the, the YAML files. So in this example, uh, we um, we write the, the Python code uh, directly in the YAML, but of course, most of the time you will uh, call a function defined in the dedicated uh, Python uh, file. Uh, but uh, with this plugin, uh, the data that you exposed uh, through uh, PDI uh, becomes available as an empty arrays. And you can manipulate these arrays using uh, Python and for example, you uh, can here uh, transform your data by uh, multiplying by it, the content by uh, four, and you can re-expose the, the result. And this result, you might then, um, you might then uh, use uh, HDF5 to write it. So this approach makes it possible to call Python in your uh, simulation process, in your simulation thread, after the fact, you don't have to link to Python. You don't have to uh, do anything Python related in your uh, simulation code. It will load everything that is required, transform your data, and you can write transform data instead of uh, your original data just by uh, adding a few lines of code in this uh, YAML file. This is really useful for uh, in, in process pro processing, for example. Uh, we also support the execution, as I said, of, um, of compiled code, C, Fortran, C++. Uh, for example, if the Python approach uh, is not uh, efficient enough, you might want to use C or Fortran for performance. Uh, or if you want to call libraries that um, offer APIs that are uh, not covered by the, the plugins. In this case, of course, you have to compile your code, uh, but you can compile it separately from uh, your main code as a dynamic library, and you can call the function just by giving its name and access the data that was uh, shared uh, by the simulation code in a different language. Uh, so, for example, you might have your main code written in uh, in Fortran, and you want to do some processing in C++ or the opposite or whatever. And uh, another uh, processing tool that we have uh, looked at is called uh, Desk, Desk Distributed. And um, maybe not everybody is familiar with uh, Desk, but it's a, it's a Python uh, uh, model uh, that supports a, a client scheduler worker uh, model where the, the client uh, writes uh, what to do, send it to a, a scheduler that distributes work to uh, worker nodes. And it makes it possible to uh, run Python uh, in a distributed uh, fashion, in a parallel fashion. It's based on a, on a task model to describe the work. So the, the client 
uh, submit a, a task graph to the scheduler that will uh, send the task graph or actually each task uh, that is ready to the, the worker to execute. And on top of this uh, task-based model, uh, Dask offer uh, many interesting um, tools. Uh, for example, you have uh, support for NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Learn, Pandas, and all these APIs have been ported on top of Dask so that uh, you just have to say how you want to uh, distribute your uh, data, how you want to chunk your data, and uh, then you can just use the normal NumPy or SciPy API, um, uh, exactly the one you had before, and uh, you get a, a, a Python script uh, that now runs in, uh, in parallel. So for example, if we look at uh, this, um, this code, this is a, a sequential uh, Python script using a uh, scikit-learn to uh, compute a, a principal component analysis on, um, uh, on data generated by a, a simulation. So this is the, the sequential version of the code, and you can uh, use Dask to make it uh, parallel, for example, if you want to go faster, or if the data doesn't fit in memory. And in that case, uh, you just have to change a few lines. So first, you have uh, to uh, import uh, the new uh, uh, the new uh, Python uh, modules to uh, get access to to Dask. Then, at the beginning of your script, you should um, add a few lines to connect to the Dask scheduler, and uh, you just have to change the way you load uh, your data. So before you were uh, loading your data using h5py.file, and now you use um, uh, something that transformed this into um, a Dask array, the A for Dask array, uh, and you specify how you want to chunk it, so how, what size of each block that will be handled should be. And just by doing that, you've switched uh, from a, a sequential execution to a parallel execution. And of course, you can um, use that with a simulation uh, using uh, PDI. And we've done that, for example, at Maison de la Simulation. So you have your uh, MPI uh, simulation code that uses uh, PDI with the uh, HDF5 plugin. And whenever the data is uh, written, the, the specification tree specifies to write it to the parallel file system. Uh, once the simulation finishes, uh, you can run this uh, Dask uh, analytics that will, uh, on the, the client side, so the, the script I've just shown, will just read the metadata from the parallel file system, not the, the data itself, only the metadata, uh, in order to construct uh, the task graph. So uh, when you call this uh, PC, PCA, PCA, a principal component analytics, uh, Behind the scene, uh, you're uh, building a task graph uh, that is then submitted to uh, the scheduler that is uh, a different process. And the scheduler will uh, submit the various tasks as they become uh, ready to the workers. And only uh, in this task execution do the workers uh, read the actual data from uh, the parallel file system. So this is a, a really nice approach when you do uh, you want to um, run a rather complex analytics on the data generated by a, a simulation. However, um, the, the parallel file system becomes the, the bottleneck. And that's why at uh, Maison de la Simulation, uh, we have uh, developed uh, DESA. Uh, it's the uh, work, uh, the PhD work of uh, Amal Gerogi. And the uh, approach with DESA is to uh, really uh, modify only a very few things. Uh, so you, you have to change the, the plugin you use uh, in PDI and to very, uh, to do very little changes on your uh, analytics. And so you, you switch from this approach to this approach. And in the new approach, your um, simulation codes uh, still executes as it did before, but because you changed the, the YAML file, 
And uh, now you load the DAISA bridge uh, plugin instead of um, the HDF5 plugin. And this DAISA bridge, when data uh, is generated by the simulation, uh, will send the data directly uh, to the worker nodes of uh, desk. So you have to have desk running uh, together with your MPI simulation, and the data is sent directly to the workers. And the metadata uh, describing uh, this, uh, this data is sent uh, to the desk scheduler. Your analytics client, instead of using um, uh, the uh, HDF5 to uh, retrieve the metadata from the disk, will now use a DAISA metadata adapter uh, to fetch uh, the metadata from uh, the scheduler. And uh, this is only a very small change. And from then on, uh, the rest is exactly the same as it was uh, before. Uh, this metadata is used to build the uh, task graph exactly as it was before. The task graph is submitted to the scheduler exactly as it was before. And the scheduler submits the task uh, to the worker exactly as it did before. And because the scheduler uses um, a data locality to submit the task, the task uh, using the data that has been uh, sent uh, by your simulation are executed exact right where the data is. So uh, you switch from an approach that uh, uh, has a bottleneck using the parallel file system as an intermediate between the simulation and the analytics to in-situ analytics uh, with only a very small change in the uh, YAML file and uh, a small change on the analytics side also. Uh, so uh, on the analytics side, that was the, the version using a post hoc uh, analysis. And if you switch uh, to uh, DAISA, that's all you have to change. So once again, you have to uh, import the, the module. And instead of using um, uh, DA from array, you have to use DAISA.adapter, uh, but that's it. Uh, the, the data you load uh, comes from, or the metadata actually uh, comes from a different place, but you don't have to change anything else. And from a performance point of view, um, we've done a, a little experiment um, comparing um, three uh, solutions. So we run uh, a small uh, simulation, that's a heat equation simulation in this case, uh, for what finite differences, uh, a very simple one, uh, on the RUSH uh, cluster that you will use for the tutorials. Uh, we use X cores for the, the simulation itself and Y cores for the analytics. And we compare uh, either no analytics at all or the use of DAISA for uh, uh, principal component analysis, or the use of a uh, post hoc uh, desk for the principal component analysis. And we run with three, uh, three size of uh, problem. Uh, it's, a, it's a weak scale. Um, what we see is that, uh, of course, uh, not doing any analytics uh, is, the, is the fastest. Um, when we run uh, the post hoc uh, analytics using desk, uh, we have to add to the t execution time, uh, the simulation time, we have to add the time to write data to disk. And we have, after the fact, to run the analytics. The analytics uses uh, less uh, nodes than the, the simulation, but it takes quite a lot of time. Uh, by using DAISA, uh, we run the analytics, uh, of course, on the same number of nodes, but together with the simulation. So the, uh, during the simulation, we use uh, a bit more nodes. Uh, but instead of writing to this, we send the data through the network to these uh, additional nodes. And what we see is that uh, in that case, the, the execution time of uh, going through the network is uh, much, much smaller uh, than the execution uh, time for uh, writing and uh, reading uh, from, uh, from disk. 
In fact, in uh, this case, the, uh, if we had put the, the actual uh, value for the, the, the total time, it would not it would not fit in the in the figure. So really, this approach makes it possible to switch from very simple I/O to uh, uh, more complex I/O to in situ analytics with minimal changes at uh, every steps. So. Uh, let me conclude by saying that uh, in practice, uh, PDI is a, a library that is uh, publicly available. Um, the, the license is a, a free open source uh, license. Uh, we have regular uh, releases. We have packages available for uh, uh, many uh, Linux uh, distributions. So for Debian, you just have to do a PT get install. Uh, um, uh, PDI and you have it. Uh, we have uh, a SPAC uh, recipes to install it on your uh, supercomputer. We have online uh, documentation about uh, PDI and it's really uh, a library that we uh, target for production. Uh, we uh, really test it uh, a lot. Uh, for each commit, we have more than 700 tests that run on more than 14 uh, different platforms. So really, it's a production grade uh, library used in uh, production codes. Um, so yeah. Uh, and to conclude, uh, I just want to, to, to say again that uh, PDI is a li library for data coupling. It's not an IO library. It provides a declarative annotation API and supports multiple plugins for uh, data processing. PDI itself doesn't do any data processing. It just uh, gives access to the uh, plugins that um, interface with the existing libraries. So you don't uh, you don't uh, tie yourself to a specify a specific approach. Uh, with PDI, you just describe the I.O. you want to do in your YAML, and you can switch from one approach to the other, including uh, your uh, own code, including in-situ processing, without uh, even recompiling the, the simulation code. Um, one example we had recently is someone um, uh, using PDI uh, in a um, machine learning uh, case. Uh, they they do reinforcement learning and basically they have they use this uh, gym tool that is a Python tool and uh, at every step they they, they 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 change the state of the simulation and they use PDI to interface a gym with uh, with the simulation without recompiling the, the code they can now um, steer uh, the simulation according to what the machine learning uh, process uh, 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 says. So uh, I think it's time to switch, of course, to the uh, Q&A session first, and then uh, to the tutorial. Um, but so uh, if you want, uh, you can have a look at the documentation. Uh, you're also welcome to, to join um, the, the, the Slack channel of PDI, where you can meet the, the developers, you can meet uh, other users of the library and uh, the tutorial is available online at this address and uh, just after the Q&A session I will uh, give you the information on about how to connect uh, to the cluster for the tutorial. Thank you for your attention and if you have any questions I would be really happy to answer them.